What up, my summer family? <laughs> you already know who it is. It's your boy Scorpio with Sins of Many, and today we have got something special in store for you guys. Today I am doing my sew along to my very first pattern with the Know Me by Mimi G Pattern Company. I don't think you guys understood me when I said it, so I'm gonna say it twice so it sounds just as nice. Today I am be doing my sew along to my very first pattern with the Know Me by Mimi G. All right, guys, it is the Know Me 2010. Of course, you know I come with the vibes. It is a varsity bomber jacket. Dress up, dress it down. I like to call it modern streetwear. <laughs> so definitely, guys, go ahead and check it out. If you don't have it, what exactly are you doing with your life? Like, seriously. All right, now before we get started, I got a couple acknowledgements that I have to make. Number one, give all blessings to Mimi G the GOAT. Thank you so much for blessing with the opportunity to work with you and collab with you and the Know Me brand. Work with all these amazing designers, man. It is it is definitely, definitely a movement that I'm happy to be a part of. Now, secondly, I want to thank you guys, everyone who supported me, bought the pattern, um, all the DMs, the comments, all the love that you guys have been showing, man. You know we do it for y'all. Uh, so I appreciate you guys. Last but not least, I want to dedicate this video and especially the jacket that I'm going to make to a very special organization that's near and dear to me, all the bros around the world, Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated, September 19th, 1963. Happy Founders, Happy Founders Day, my bros. Love you guys, ow ow. Now we got that out the way. Let's cut and sew, baby. All right, we are starting with my very own pattern. This is the Know Me 2010. It is a varsity bomber jacket pattern. If you turn it to the back, Materials that can be used, suggested fabrics are gonna be corduroy, cotton blends, micro suede, wool blends, sweatshirts, fleece, any of these can be used. We are going to be doing the traditional wool blend route. Uh, we're gonna have, for the sleeves, is gonna be like a vinyl leather. Uh, the lining is gonna be your typical polyester cotton blend. And then of course, interfacing. Now interfacing, when you have a lightweight uh, fabric, depending on what you use, interfacing absolutely. All right, we are going to be dealing with a lot of pieces for today's so long video, so we gotta pay attention, make sure we get it right. We are gonna be doing version B. That's going to be the shorter of the two, not the three quarter length. Um, reason being, I think it's the much more intricate and detailed one, especially with the slanted pockets, okay? So, first piece that we're gonna be doing, cutting out is going to be piece number four. That is the back. We are going to be cutting one fabric, one lining, and be cutting on the fold. Then we are going to be doing next piece is number five. That is going to be the neck band. We are going to be cutting just one, and this is going to be a contrast fabric. And remember, this is has to be a stretch fabric. So this is where your rib knits is going to be. I personally like to use a high duty rib knit. Uh, definitely when you do order it, there is a difference. Some are gonna be soft, some are gonna say rolled. You want the high quality, heavy duty rib knit. Piece number seven, that is going to be the front lining. This is actually used for both uh, patterns, but like I said, specifically, we're gonna be doing version B today. You're gonna to cut two out of your lining fabric. All right, this is the upper sleeve. This is going to be the cap of the shoulder. This is gonna be another contrast fabric that you use. You're gonna be cutting two of the contrast fabric. All right, number nine, just like that was the upper sleeve, this is the lower sleeve. Again, for both versions, only on the left side are you going to have this placement right here for the sleeve pocket, okay? Make sure you transfer these markings onto the fabric. Piece number 10, this is going to be the pocket that's going to be on the sleeve. Make sure you transfer your markings here. That is going to be for the zipper, for the zipper insert, and especially here, you're going to be folding these over and stitching right here to make, actually make that jacket, the pocket pop. All right, piece number 11. This is actually going to be the sleeve lining. You're gonna cut two out of your lining fabric. Piece number 12, this is going to be for your cuffs. Again, stretch material, you're gonna cut two of that. 
13. This is actually going to be for the lower band. Again, stretch material. We're gonna be doing a custom rib knit and you wanna cut two of this. Piece number 15, this is going to be the front for our pattern. Again, version B. You're gonna cut two of these. Make sure you're transferring all the markings, especially for this pocket placement. All right, so piece number 16, of course, is the pocket that's going to be going on our front piece. Make sure you're transferring all the markings of this pocket box. This is where we are going to be inserting the zipper. Cut to of the same fabric. Piece number 17, this is the gusset. This is going to go around the pocket and really gonna give it that three-dimensional look. You're gonna cut two of these for each pocket. Piece number 18, that's gonna be the front facing. This is gonna go on the underside or on the inside of the jacket. You're gonna cut two of the fabric and cut two of the interface. Again, if you have a heavy duty sturdy material interfacing, I don't think you're really gonna need it. I'm not gonna use it today, but again, for the fleece, for the cotton blends, for the suede, even maybe the corduroy, definitely would recommend using the interface. And last but not least, we have number 19. This is going to be the guide for the buttonholes, which are gonna be snap buttons for version B. All right, first thing we're gonna get started with is going to be our pocket for our front piece. First thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to go to the sewing machine and you're going to stitch the box. This is going to be where we're going to add the zipper insert. As you can see, I'm not gonna be using any interface. I'm using a sturdier wool blend fabric, so not really needed. But again, instructions say so, definitely do it. After we stitch it down, we are going to be inserting the zipper here. And again, this is going to be for the front pocket on the front. All right, so here it is the pocket box stitched down. I've went ahead and cut it. You see the diagonal flaps, making sure that we do not cut into the stitching. All right, once we folded the flaps back on the pocket box, this is the way it's gonna look. This is gonna be an easy insert for the zipper once we're able to install it. You wanna go ahead and measure it, make sure that it fits appropriately before you take it to the stitch machine and sew it down. And it is a perfect fit. Beautiful. So now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we are going to stitch around it, securing the zipper in place. Okay, so looking good so far. <laughs> All right, just go ahead and make it sure that the zipper is actually working properly. It does. Wonderful, beautiful stitch. Go ahead and zoom in so you can see how beautiful that pocket box is looking. All right, so with your designer label, I know the instructions tell you to use like a twill tape, but I want it to be a little thicker and I want it to show because I'm a little bit more flashy. <laughs> so this is definitely off the books. But uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to take a piece of the leather that I'm going to be using for the sleeves, folding it in half, just enough to fit the designer label. You can use some glue, you can pin it down. But what I'm going to do is just stick the label on right here making sure it's even on all sides and then take it to the sewing machine and voila. All right, so here, just gonna fold it over because I want it to look clean on the pocket. Then using the same markings you transfer over for that twill tape on the pattern, just gonna place it here. And then just as we did before with the label, you're just gonna stitch it down. Final product should look clean just like this. Now we're moving on to the gusset. This is the part that's going to be wrapping around the pocket, making it give it that 3D look. First, identify the markers that you transferred from the pattern piece on to the fabric. You are going to be stitching both ends down together, okay? So then once you've done that, it should look something like this once you do stitch it. Next thing you want to do is you want to find it and place it accordingly around that front pocket. You're going to match up the dots and you're going to pin it down. Now you want to make sure that you're placing the dots accordingly because it really does matter, especially when you're dealing with a 3D pocket look. Want it to pop. 
but you want it to look right when you're doing it. Once you got the three markers pinned down accordingly, you want to go ahead and spread the gusset around the pocket. Make sure that it gets all the way around and you wanna do so cleanly and evenly, especially right around this area, right around the curved edge. You wanna make sure that gusset is spread out evenly, pinned down evenly, and that there's not too many ruffles in there. Should be just enough fabric that you'll get a clean stitch line once you're finished. All right, very clean, very nice. Let's go ahead and take out all these pins. All right, let's take a good, nice, up close look at this. Very clean lines, no bubbles, no ruffling, very nice. All right, just wanna turn it inside out and you can kind of see the pocket forming here. Want to poke out these edges Oop. there you go make sure the corners are looking nice beautiful beautiful that's a nice pocket right there guys all right now just to secure the form and the curvature of that pocket you can go ahead and get some scissors and we could always clip the curves making sure that we do not cut the stitch All right now we're just going to take it to the sewing machine and we're just going to do a top stitch right around the formation of the pocket once you're done this is exactly how it's going to look see how it's giving it that really three-dimensional look on that pocket so it's really going to look like it's hanging out of your jacket on the front piece First thing we're going to be looking is we're going to identify the markings that we transferred from the pattern. This is going to be exactly where we're going to put our front pockets that we just made. All right, now make sure you put them down accordingly. We're going to fold over just a quarter inch before so. This is where we're going to pin and attach it to the front piece. So again, it's going to give that three-dimensional look like it is actually like popping out and standing on top of that front piece. Then we're just going to pin it. Once we folded it over and we're going to set the pins all around, securing it in place, then we're going to stitch it down. A little trick that I did is when you want it to really look like it's popping out and give it that 3D look is you want to make sure that the underside is not pop is not exposed further than the top of the jack of the pocket. So you fold it down, and if you're able to fold it down and the top is over, I guess you could say the underside, then you're good. And it's actually going to pop really, really well. So you see, once we've stitched it down, everything is looking good. Perfect. All right. And you see how none of the underside is exposed, so it does look as if it's standing. We got the back piece, right sides facing. You wanna go ahead and attach the back piece. And we're going to attach that to the two front pieces that we just did with the pockets. And remember, front sides, sorry, right sides facing one another. All right, this is how both should look after you've stitched it down. Next thing is we're going to do a stay stitch around the neck. So that's going to be both the back piece and the two front pieces together. And this is simply just to secure the curvature as well. Now you want to do this about a quarter inch. I wouldn't do anything too deep because you don't want it to show when you attach the collar. All right, so now we're going to move on to the collar band. This is going to be with a stretch rib knit. Now, again, you remember, we couldn't find one that matched the colors on my jacket, so we're going to do a custom one, okay? These are the three colors that we're going to use. It's going to work beautifully, the brown, the white, and the gold. Now, once we put it on top, now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to literally break it down into how I want the sizing of each to be. Because remember, it's gonna be double-sided double and we're gonna be folding it over. So the colors, all three colors are going to need to show on both sides of the neckband once it's folded to attach it to the jacket. So I measured out about an inch and a half for each. Go ahead and cut it through all layers of each color. All right, 
right, and there we have it. All cut, three colors going to be pinned together. All right, so this is what it's gonna look like after you stitch it all together. I went ahead and ironed it down. You see how all three are spaced accordingly and they fit the neck band perfectly. So what I'm doing next is I'm just gonna pin the pattern piece down. That way I could just kind of cut out the shape of it onto the fabric. And then from here, we can just go ahead and pin it onto the jacket. From here, we then fold it over. We're gonna do a base stitch, securing the two sides together. So now that the neck band's been basted, we're gonna attach it to our jacket at the neck, making sure that we match up with the markings that we transferred from the pattern. We're gonna make sure we secure the stretch rib knit collar to the jacket front piece first, and then we're gonna do the other side, and then we're going to stretch the neck band collar to fit the length of the neck. It's important we do this because you don't want a flimsy collar. And you don't want a super tight one either, okay? So take it to the sewing machine, stitch it down. This is going to be the finished product. Nice, securely in place. Stands upright on its own, not too flimsy, not too taut either. We're going to set that aside, and now we are going to move on to our sleeves. More importantly, shoulder cap. Now, because I'm extra, again, this is still the upper sleeve piece. I just cut it into two because I want to do a special little colorway for the jacket. And then we get the lower sleeve piece. This is a vinyl leather that I'm going to be using. This is going to attach and blend very well with the upper sleeve. Now you can see the formation of the colors of the jacket coming on. So you're going to match the markings from the pattern that you put onto the fabric, making sure that the upper sleeve attaches here. So go ahead and pin it in place. And this is the finished product. Now from here, this is going to be the left arm only. This we're gonna put our pocket for the sleeve. Now you see I've transferred the markings from the pocket pattern onto the fabric. And again, left side only. All right, from here, we got our sleeve pocket pattern piece that we got, that we cut out of our fabric. We turn it over. You're gonna see that I've already traced out the pocket box that we're going to be using to stitch. Again, this is going to be for the zipper insert as well. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did for the front pocket pieces. Went ahead and cut the pocket box. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna make a little slit right here in the middle. And then we are gonna cut long ways till we get about a quarter inch from the end. And we're gonna do our diagonal cuts just like we did for the front pocket pieces making sure that we do not cut the stitch. And we're gonna do the same for the other side. Then this is where we're going to insert the zipper just like we did for the front. We're gonna fold down the flaps. Now, again, because I'm using a sturdy vinyl leather, these aren't going to be the easiest things to do, but once you get it, you can insert the zipper, take it to the sewing machine, stitch it down, and go ahead and check to make sure everything is working, the zipper is functional, that you didn't stitch anything down unnecessarily. Now from here, what you wanna do is we're going to fold the pieces, fold the ends of the pocket or the corners of the pocket together. You should have transferred these markers. You should have transferred these markings from the pattern piece. See that dot right there? We are going to stitch going all the way across and we're going to do that out all four corners for this pocket. This again is gonna give it that elevated look for the external pocket on the sleeve. Once you've done all four, this is the way it looks. Turn it over. You're going to want to cut into the edges you want to try to limit the bulkiness of the corners as much as possible. And then you're going to turn it right side out. And we should have a nice looking pocket. All right. You see how it's all clean. It's not too bulky. 
because again, we're gonna have to fold this over again about a quarter of an inch to secure it before we stitch it down onto the sleeve. So yeah, nice, elevated, clean. Very good. All right, so we got the sleeve. We got the cap. Everything's looking good. We got the transfer markings here. We've already made our pocket. So now we're just going to fold it under about a quarter of an inch, like I said before, and we're going to secure it. Now with this, after you've turned it under a quarter of an inch, especially with such a thick material, you may need a lot more pins but we do what we got to do. All right, so you're going to stitch them all in place, secure it down. It's going to look something like this once you've used all your pins. But again, once we've done this, it's going to give a nice little elevated look to the pocket. So take it to the sewing machine. We're going to make sure that we stitch it down. Edge stitching, beautiful. See how it gives it that nice little apparent look? All right, so from here, we wanna fold it right sides facing, and we are going to stitch it down just like we would any other sleeve. Once we do it for one, we gotta do it for both, and bam, we got ourselves some sleeves, baby. All right, nice little colorway action we got going on, but you know me and panels, I love color blocking, I love colors. <laughs> Just like we did with the neckband, we're going to have to make custom rib knit cuffs. We're going to do the same thing like we did for the neckband. I've already cut them out and I've sewn them together. Now I'm just ironing them flat because you want to reduce the bulkiness. Once we've done that and cut it into the appropriate size, we are going to join right ends together. So right sides facing. Try to match up the color panels as much as we can because the last thing you want is disjointed looking cuffs. All right, we've sewn them together using the sewing machine. We're... All right, so then you wanna turn them inside out. So wrong sides are gonna be facing again and you're gonna have right sides being exposed. And you see, nice three panel custom cuffs. Looking good. Go ahead and try it, make sure it's not too Oversized, it still gives some shape and dimension to the cuffs. You don't want it slipping all the way off. Okay, so we got our sleeve, we got our cuff. We're going to, with the raw edges at the top, so the raw edges are gonna be meeting the cuff of the sleeve, we are going to put the cuff over the sleeve. And as you can see, raw edges of the cuff are going to be with the raw edge of the sleeve right there at the hem we're going to match that up and then here's the tough part we got to make sure that it's going to have to stretch to fit so you're going to pin it down and it's going to require a lot of pins but you all the same time you want to maintain the integrity of the fabric and of the sleeve but you're going to have to make the sleeve stretch to the fabric And once we've got that done, we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and be very careful in stitching around the cuff to the sleeves. We're gonna do the same for the other one. And then once you're done, this is exactly how it should be coming out. Ah, wasn't quite lined up there, but it's all right. All right, so we got our cuffs, we got our sleeves. We are done with the arms, for the moment at least. And what I like to do is do periodic fit checks with a couple of my pieces, especially with the sleeves, because you don't want them to be too oversized. You don't want them to be too tight. Want to make sure that the cuffs, the sleeves, everything is going along with the look that I want. All right, so moving on, sleeve lining. We got, yes, it is pink. We are extra. <laughs> but we got the sleeve lining. This is including the upper and the lower sleeve all together. We're going to right sides facing, stitch them together. All right, so went ahead and pressed the seams down. Added a stay stitch on the sleeve lining. Now what we want to do next is we have our sleeve. We're going to do the right sides facing. We are going to put the right side of the sleeve lining. We are going to put that over our sleeve. And 
And then we are going to pin that to the cuff and to the sleeve. So you should have three layers that you're gonna have to pin all together. You're gonna have to stretch. Once you've taken it to the sewing machine, this is how it's gonna look. You're gonna stitch through all three layers. Then we're going to turn it right side out. And then we are going to flip the cuffs up and then we're going to tuck the sleeve lining inside the sleeve. And now we have a fully lined sleeve. Next up, we got the formation of the lower band. Same thing, three colors. We already cut the pieces individually. We're gonna do the same thing that we did with the cuffs and for the neck band, we are going to stitch them all together. Then we are going to iron them flat like so. Cut them into the proper sizing. And just, again, you can see it here, the three colors, then you have to double up because once you fold them, you want all three colors to show and be exposed, okay? so. Onto the front piece, you see the markings that we transferred over. You're going to stitch an inch, and then you are going to secure that box, and then you're going to cut inside up to the stitch line. Gives it that flexibility, and you're gonna see why when we attach the lower band like such. Okay, so it's going to be right sides facing. Just so we want you to see that it is the lower band, right sides facing. There's going to be a marker you're going to transfer over just like we always do so much that the lower piece of that front is going to actually kind of drape over. And that is intentional. All right, so go ahead and pin that lower band in place to that front piece at the hem. Do the same with the other side. And then once you've sewn it down, you're going to see the formation of this lower band. All right, so everything's looking good. Moving on, we have our front facing. We are going to be attaching the front lining to the front facing, pinning at the top, working our way all the way down, securing it in place, making sure it matches up to the markings that we transferred over. The ends should match up perfectly to the front facing, which it does, then making sure that we secure the marking here at the edge. So this is the way it should look once we have stitched both the front lining to the front facing. And just like we did for the front, we are gonna do the same thing with the lining. We are going to attach the back lining to our front facing at the shoulders, securing them in place before we attach it to the overall jacket. All right, so main part of our lining is done. Everything looks nice, nothing looks frayed. We're gonna put this to the side for the moment. We're gonna bring back that front piece to the lower band. Now with the right sides, facing you see the raw edge of that band that's hasn't been touched yet we are going to attach that to the raw edges of the lining that we just did with the front lining and the front piece and the front facing we're going to match those up evenly again the same way we did to the lower band at the front pieces we're going to do the same for the lining and the lower band All right, and once you got all this bottom of the raw edges of the lower band secure with the lining, you're gonna take it to the sewing machine, stitch it down. Once you're finished, it should look a little something like this. All right. I'd say it's looking good, guys. <laughs> all right, so as you can tell, it is a two-faced band, so when we do fold it over, you're going to see that it's going to mirror each other and the three colors are going to be exposed. It's kind of like this. If you could picture it, it's all coming together. All right, so now we're just gonna have to attach both our front piece to our front facing.
Now again, this is the wrong side of the front facing and the front lining. We're going to put right sides together, matching it up with the side raw edges of the lower band that is exposed. I know that was a mouthful, <laughs> but once we have them together, you're gonna go ahead and pin it in place at the marking. You see how it's right sides facing? And you wanna be real careful when we pin it and where we pin it at. So then we can go ahead and just pin the rest of it in place and then we're going to stitch it down. And then we are going to head to the machine and we are just going to go ahead and stitch that down and across, securing that band in place. And this is how it's going to look after you're done with that. And down the seam, again, we want to reduce the bulkiness And then once you turn it out, we have our lower band secured. Give us that nice little tab that's going to be at the bottom of the hem that most varsity and bomber jackets have. Very clean. Very, very clean. Very nice. Both the lining and the front piece attached to our lower band. Then we flip it over. Now we're going to attach the lining at the neck. Now with right sides together, we are going to attach both our neck pieces now we're going to fold our neck band down because we want to be able to catch that on the edges line up the lining to our outer front piece matching the dots and the markings that we transferred over once we do that we're going to pin it all the way across. We're going to take it to the sewing machine. We're going to stitch it down and we should have caught enough of that neck band to secure it in place and give it a nice clean professional look. Go ahead and trim away any of the extra seam allowance that we have. Now, important part, we're going to stuff everything through one of those armholes. I know some people roll up their fabric beforehand. I just kind of stuff it in there like a stuffed turkey kind of. All right, so you want to go ahead and pull everything through one of those armholes. It's a process, guys. <laughs> All right, now what you want to do is obviously there are some corners that you want to make sure maintain the integrity of the shape of the piece that you're making. So right here at the bottom, when we connected the front facing to the front lining, we're gonna make sure that we get that corner done nicely, poked out. Same here, right here at the top of the front, at the front piece by the neck band, we wanna make sure that maintains its integrity as well. And to do that, we use a little poker. Just go in there, make sure the edges stay sharp, because again, we're gonna go through with the top stitch. We wanna make sure that we really capture the shape of this jacket. So, should be four paint point, la, <laughs> sorry. There should be four points uh, that you're gonna be using this pointer at. Two by the neck band on the front piece and at the bottom where we connected that front piece to the front lining, to the front facing, sorry. And once you're do, done with that, you're going to be doing a top stitch right underneath the neck band. Now, while I did that, I went ahead and did a top stitch all the way down across the neck band, as you can see, nice. And then I just went ahead and did it all the way down the front piece as well. Again, kind of gives it a little bit more structure. And then next step is we are going to be attaching the arm. We got the lining, we got our front piece. You see, everything is lined up. So what we're going to do is we are going to turn at the shoulder inside out, making sure we get a hold of both the lining and the fabric. And then we are going to attach the sleeve 
as is. We're just going to insert it right into the hole, into the armhole, matching it at the points, at the shoulder, and right there at the inseam underneath. Now everything should fit smoothly. Everything should fit nicely. If it doesn't, you may have to ease in things a little bit. And the particular point that you do not want to do is you do not want to capture all three layers. You just want to capture the sleeve. You want to be able to pin just the sleeve to the main bodice of our jacket. Do not attach, do not pin down the fabric. I mean, the lining to the fabric at this stage. Then when you turn it right side out, you should have a nice sleeve constructed. So now you can see the three different contrast fabrics. Here. So then after that, we're going to turn the jacket back inside out. We're going to reach in and grab the sleeve lining that we did not attach. And we're going to pin that to the front lining of the jacket. From here, then you're going to have to slip stitch those two together at the sewing machine. All right, so we have the majority of our jacket done. Here it is. Open it up. Looks nice, clean, and beautiful with the pink lining with the IOTA colors. Uh, the jacket, the shoulders, back seams, everything looks good in place. Couldn't be happier with how this jacket is turning out. The cuffs, our custom cuffs, by the way, turned out really, really nice. Some minor disparities in lining them up on the cuffs, but that's okay. I like it nonetheless. All right, so this last step, we're gonna be using piece number 19. That's the buttonhole guide for the snap buttons. And then we're simply just going to lay it on top, use it as a reference. Uh, buttons should line up about an inch from the seams. It's going to be six buttons. This snap button toolkit from Amazon for like 20 bucks. It's my go-to for snap buttons. But then for this jacket in particular, I went ahead and bought some more brown ones, uh, which I didn't have previously, but I think that would match the jacket, obviously. So with these brown snap buttons, we're just going to simply hammer them in place using this toolkit, and then the jacket should be done, guys. All right, so I've transferred the markings for the buttons. I'm gonna be using a sharp object. You can use anything, but I'm gonna use these little scissors that I used to use, and I'm just going to pierce the fabric at the location of the markings that I've used the button gold that I've used the buttonhole guide for. Do each one. Now you're not trying to do it through all layers. You can if you line them up perfectly, but for the sake of this instructional video, we're just going to do it one at a time. All right, so then using these tools, we're going to snap on the snap buttons <laughs> all right so we're going to use this little saucer thing and then of course we need the buttons front back and the snaps all right go ahead and set the toolkit to the side now we're going to add we're going to put the button first so this is going to be the covering of the button, I guess you could say. That's going to be the brown part, the part that's going to show. Go ahead and line all of them up. Then we're going to use this little saucer thing, flip it over. Make sure it goes through the hole that we did with our sharps. Then we're going to add the snap back on the button. <laughs> and then using this little tool, that's going to actually going to be used on top of the good old hammer <laughs> and using that tool we're going to place this right on top of the snap remember the buttons on the underside on top of the saucer looking thingamajigger and we're just going to hammer it in place and then once you're done you flip back over you have the top part of your snap button secured in place go ahead and repeat that for all buttons and then we get started on the other side. Once you've done that and the other side, 
my guys, we can say that we have completed a Varsity Bomber jacket. Go ahead and make sure the buttons align up and the snaps are actually snapping. <laughs> Open it up, take a good look at the marvel that you just created. Take it all in, look at the pockets, look at the buttons, look at the custom rib knit that we did, check out the zippers, everything looking clean, looking nice, functioning. shoulders are in place they look nice no loose threads sleeve pocket it's popping zippers functioning properly no stitch out of place the cuffs are cuffing the cuffs are cuffing and remember guys this is a custom cuff that we created design label front pocket again flashy but still classy <laughs> lower band is in place neck collar looking good We got ourselves a varsity jacket. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, man. We finally made it to the finish line. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me on this so long for my very first pattern with the Nomi brand. If you followed everything to a T, your jacket should be looking just as dope as mine does right now. Y'all see the front pockets. Y'all see the details. <laughs> Y'all see everything. The custom rib knits. Hope you enjoyed the journey. Definitely catch your soul along on the Know Me YouTube channel as well as my very own YouTube channel called Scorp Knows. And make sure you check out everyone else's as well, man. Like I said, we got a dope, we got a roster full of dope designers so definitely check them out support show some love if you haven't got your pattern i don't know what you're waiting on but make sure you go ahead and get it should be in stores right now and of course to the best friend alive i don't know if i theta this one is for you guys all right so until next time so on fam i'll see you